Earth's leaders convened, debating the risks and rewards of such a bold move. The dangers were undeniable the Empire would retaliate fiercely, but humanity had never been one to back down from a challenge. Soon, a fleet was prepared, equipped with the best technology Earth had to offer. Soldiers, volunteers and allies from liberated planets joined, each ready to fight for a future free from the Empire's tyranny. As the fleet approached Tarven, they saw the devastation below. The once vibrant planet lay in ruins, its people forced into hiding, the skies filled with Imperial ships. In the vast darkness of space, Earth was just a small blue planet among countless others, barely a blip in the eyes of the Galactic Empire. Known for its technology, the Empire dominated star systems light years away, subjugating weaker planets without a second thought. When their scouts first identified Earth, the decision was swift Earth was primitive, its inhabitants caught up in internal conflicts, lacking space travel capabilities beyond their own moon. The Galactic Empire's council barely hesitated. A fleet was dispatched, equipped with weapons far beyond anything Earth could comprehend. They expected a swift conquest, a new territory to claim, resources to exploit, and another species to add to their collection of subdued worlds. But Earth had a surprise waiting, one the Empire would never forget. The battle for Tarven was fierce, unlike anything Earth's forces had encountered before. The Empire had unleashed its latest weapons, powerful machines designed to incinerate entire cities in seconds, but Earth's coalition had something stronger, a unity born from shared hardship, trust, and the courage to fight for each other. The coalition forces, small and nimble, outmaneuvered the Empire's towering machines. Earth's hybrid fighters struck from all directions, dismantling the Empire's behemoths piece by piece until only scorched metal remained. People on Tarven emerged from their hiding places, watching in awe as the invaders were driven back. Hope, once snuffed out, reignited in their eyes. The first ships entered Earth's orbit with confidence, and upon entering the atmosphere, the Empire's commanders made their demands known. They broadcasted a message across all frequencies, displaying a hologram of their Imperial insignia above major cities, demanding surrender. But instead of bowing, Earth responded with defiance. The leaders of Earth, although divided, rallied in a rare moment of unity. Governments across the planet activated emergency protocols, and for the first time in history, military forces from every corner of the globe coordinated a single defense. The Empire observed this with mild amusement, dismissing Earth's response as the last, futile gasp of a defeated world. But the resistance Earth put up was not only unexpected, it was staggering. Earth scientists and engineers quickly deciphered the basic frequencies of the Empire's communication, relaying information faster than expected, hacking into their systems to reveal crucial weaknesses. As the Empire's ships attempted to, to deploy their ground forces, they encountered another shock. Earth's atmosphere was rich with microbes, pollutants, and unique particles foreign to the Empire's carefully regulated air. The alien soldiers' protective suits could not fully filter out these unexpected environmental threats. Many soldiers began to fall ill, their once invulnerable armor and training failing them in the face of Earth's unpredictability. Earth's defenders seized upon this vulnerability, launching a series of coordinated attacks. They exploited the Empire's rigid, predictable strategies, attacking from unexpected angles, using guerrilla tactics that confused the highly trained, yet overly regimented alien forces. Earth's unconventional approach was something the Empire had never encountered in its long history of conquest. It wasn't just strength that made Earth dangerous, it was the unpredictability, the sheer stubbornness, and the resolve of its people to defend their home at any cost. With Tarven liberated, the Coalition's victory resounded across the galaxy. More planets rose up, inspired by Earth's success. The Empire's iron grip began to loosen, as even their own soldiers started questioning the Council's ruthless methods. The rebellion had become unstoppable, a movement that Earth had sparked and would continue to nurture. Humanity had not only defended its own world, but had given the galaxy a taste of something it had long been denied freedom. Yet, with every victory, Earth remained aware of the cost. They knew the Empire was wounded but not defeated, that the Council would be plotting their revenge with every setback. As weeks passed, the Empire became increasingly frustrated, expending more resources and soldiers than they'd ever anticipated. What was supposed to be a simple operation had become a nightmare. 
The Empire's commanders began requesting reinforcements, but the Council back home hesitated, embarrassed at their inability to handle a supposedly primitive world. Still, the reinforcements came, each wave more powerful than the last, and yet Earth's resistance only grew fiercer. Earth's hackers infiltrated their networks, Earth scientists quickly adapted to their technology, and Earth soldiers fought with a resilience and ingenuity that turned each battle into a costly struggle for the Empire. The Empire, accustomed to quick victories and subdued populations, had underestimated the will of humans, their creativity under pressure, and their intense desire to protect their home and families. As word spread across the galaxies, other civilizations began watching the battle with fascination, admiring Earth's defiance. But humanity was ready. They fortified their defenses, reaching out to new allies, expanding their technological prowess. Every setback only strengthened their resolve. Earth had found its place among the stars not as conquerors but as defenders, as a force that refused to bow to oppression. They knew the path ahead would be treacherous, filled with battles and sacrifices. Yet, Earth's people looked to the future with hope, standing side by side with their new allies, determined to face whatever came next. And so, the fight continued, humanity's spirit unwavering, as they led a galaxy's rebellion into a new age, where freedom was no longer a distant dream, but an unstoppable force. After the liberation of Tarven, Earth's coalition had grown in both strength and reputation, its influence spreading like wildfire across the galaxy. Planet after planet began pledging support, offering not only their resources but their people, each eager to join this resistance that Earth had ignited. The Empire, once a looming shadow that had swallowed worlds whole, now found itself battling skirmishes on multiple fronts. Humanity's audacity had become more than just an annoyance, it was a thorn in the Empire's side, one that they could no longer ignore. But the Council was plotting, devising a plan to strike back with a force so overwhelming that it would either crush the rebellion or plunge the galaxy into a chaos they could control. In an attempt to turn the tide, the Empire decided to unleash one of its most feared weapons, a planet-destroying cannon, something they had never used before. It was a terrifying symbol of power, intended to remind any rebellious world of the consequences of defying the Empire. The cannon arrived, its gigantic presence casting a shadow across continents as it positioned itself in Earth's orbit, aiming for a display of total dominance. Earth's leaders, aware of the approaching threat, held urgent discussions with their top scientists and engineers. In an act of unprecedented global cooperation, they shared every piece of information they had on the Empire's technology, forming a plan so ambitious that it seemed impossible. But as Earth's history had shown time again, humans excelled when faced with impossible odds. Earth knew an Empire reprisal was inevitable, but its coalition was ready, constantly adapting, learning and growing. Spies brought back tales of Imperial desperation, of secret bases being fortified on isolated moons of weapons designed in the deepest of Imperial laboratories. Earth and its allies prepared for the worst, yet every time they advanced, they encountered more allies willing to break free from the Empire's grip. New resistance cells emerged, bolstered by Earth's courage. Messages in hidden codes, clandestine meetings in untraceable locations the rebellion was evolving, becoming an intricate web that spanned galaxies, from the glittering centers of trade to the desolate edges of space. Using everything they'd learned, Earth scientists developed a countermeasure, a risky, last-minute invention. They worked day and night, coordinating from makeshift labs and underground bunkers, repurposing satellites, hacking into the Empire's own weapon systems, redirecting energy to overload the cannon's core. The plan was set in motion just as the cannon prepared to fire. In a dazzling display of raw, human ingenuity and sheer willpower, Earth's countermeasure hit the cannon, causing it to backfire. The cannon exploded in a brilliant blaze that was visible from the surface of Earth, the shockwave shattering nearby Empire ships, sending the remnants scattering across the atmosphere. The Empire's grand symbol of terror was now a debris field surrounding Earth, and the Galactic Empire, for the first time, tasted bitter defeat. Among these new allies was a race known as the Xylerans, an ancient and secretive species with minds as sharp as their battle-hardened weapons. For centuries they had survived under the Empire's harsh rule, biding their time. Known for their mastery of stealth technology, the Azylerans approached Earth with an offer. They proposed sharing their cloaking and espionage advancements in exchange for a partnership. 
With these new capabilities, Earth could launch coordinated attacks, slipping behind enemy lines without a trace. Earth scientists worked night and day with Xyleran engineers, creating a series of cloaked scout ships capable of infiltrating even the most fortified Imperial outposts. Together, they could now gather intelligence on Imperial movements, identify supply lines, and relay information across their sprawling network of allies. The Empire's remaining forces were thrown into disarray, their morale shattered, and their leaders finally realized the cost of underestimating Earth. They attempted to retreat, but Earth's forces, now strengthened by their victory, didn't let them go easily. They harassed the retreating ships, using the debris from the destroyed cannon to shield their own attacks, forcing the Empire into a chaotic retreat they would never live down. Earth became known throughout the galaxy as the planet that had not only resisted the might of the Galactic Empire, but had turned the Empire's own weapons against them. The Empire's Council faced a wave of disbelief and outrage from its citizens, who demanded to know how an insignificant world had managed to defy and humiliate them on a galactic stage. The Empire's defeat at Earth's hands became a legend, a cautionary tale that spread faster than light, reaching the farthest corners of the known universe. Earth, once dismissed as primitive, was now viewed with a newfound respect, and in some cases fear. The galaxy's civilizations began to reconsider their approach to humanity, some even seeking alliances, eager to learn from the fierce, resilient species that had humbled the greatest power in the galaxy. And for the Galactic Empire, the memory of Earth's defiance lingered, a scar on their reputation, a reminder that not all planets could be easily conquered. The new alliance allowed Earth to strike at the Empire in ways they had never imagined. With stealth fleets and undercover operatives, they began to disrupt the Empire's intricate web of control. Energy supplies vanished, communication hubs went silent, and Imperial trade routes became perilous. It was a slow bleed, an insidious unravelling of the Empire's stability. And with each strike, Earth's coalition grew bolder, more coordinated, more relentless. They became the Empire's shadow, an invisible presence haunting every Imperial outpost and patrol. The Council's frustration grew, but so did their desperation. In their most secluded strongholds, they turned to darker experiments, forbidden technologies and untested weapons, hoping to create something that could finally bring Earth and its coalition to their knees. Humanity had proven a simple truth to the universe sometimes. A smaller opponent, armed with nothing more than willpower and creativity, could bring even the mightiest empire to its knees. And Earth, that little blue planet, had made the Galactic Empire regret every decision they had ever made to mess with IT Dot with the Empire's defeat rippling across the stars. Earth stood proudly, though battered, in a galaxy suddenly filled with whispers and wary eyes. Some species, previously terrified of even uttering a defiant thought, now saw humanity as an inspiration. Messages started arriving from distant worlds, subtle signals, coded requests, offers of information. They came from planets under the Empire's grip, civilizations quietly yearning for freedom. But even in victory, Earth's leaders were cautious. They knew the Empire wasn't finished. If history was any indication, they would return, and with an even more dangerous arsenal. For now, the galaxy watched in silence, waiting to see what this small, fierce planet would do next. One of the Empire's secret projects was rumored to be located on a hidden planet known only as Obsidian, shrouded in myth and terror. Few who had ever ventured near Obsidian had returned, and those who did spoke of weapons that could warp reality, devices that defied every known law of physics. But the Empire had cloaked Obsidian in secrecy, determined to keep its research under wraps. Earth's coalition, however, was determined to uncover the truth. In a high-risk mission, a small team of Xyleran scouts and human operatives infiltrated the edges of Obsidian's orbit, gathering glimpses of the Empire's twisted experiments. What they found were horrors beyond anything Earth could have predicted machines that could disassemble matter itself, weapons that could disrupt entire star systems. Back on Earth, the Coalition's leaders met in an emergency council, reviewing the intelligence and debating the risk. This new technology could destabilize not just the Rebellion but the entire galaxy. They knew they needed to act before these weapons could be deployed. Together with the Xyrons and a few other allied races, they planned a covert operation to disable the Empire's research base on Obsidian. It was to be a mission of stealth and precision, targeting the research labs and weapon storage facilities without drawing the attention of the main Imperial forces. 
for Earth and its allies, it was more than a mission, it was a race against time, a gamble with the fate of the galaxy hanging in the balance. Weeks after the battle, Earth's scientists continued to analyze the remnants of the Empire's technology scattered across the atmosphere. Alien metals, advanced power cores, energy shields, pieces of alien craftsmanship Earth's best minds were itching to understand. Researchers, engineers and tech experts from every nation gathered, setting aside old rivalries. With every discovery, humanity took leaps forward, creating new defences, integrating alien tech with their own. Within months, Earth had an upgraded network of orbital defences and a new class of hybrid fighters ready for anything that might come their way. But what truly set them apart was the fusion of human adaptability with alien precision. Where the Empire had once mocked Earth's supposed simplicity, Humanity had turned their own technology against them, refining it in ways the Empire could never have imagined. As the technology exchange grew, so did Earth's reputation among alien species. Some brave envoys, sneaking away from the watchful eyes of their Imperial overseers, found their way to Earth. They shared tales of oppression, of entire worlds crushed under the Empire's relentless march of cultures erased and histories rewritten. And they begged for Earth's help. It was a humbling and daunting request humans had only just discovered they weren't alone, yet here they were, seen as the hope for the galaxies oppressed. Earth's leaders hesitated would helping these worlds draw the wrath of the Empire once more. Was humanity truly ready to step into this larger stage and face the consequences of such bold actions? The mission was launched under the cover of deep space shadows. Cloaked ships darted across the void, slipping through the Empire's defences, weaving through asteroids and bypassing scanners. They arrived at Obsidian with no room for error. Earth's team, equipped with Xyleran cloaking suits and experimental energy disruptors, entered the base in complete silence. Inside, they saw the depths of the Empire's cruelty laid bare entire chambers filled with weapons that could implode planets, creatures genetically modified for warfare, and archives of alien knowledge twisted into weapons. The team worked swiftly, placing charges, hacking security systems, disabling energy cores, doing everything in their power to ensure these horrors would never see the light of day. But the Empire was not as unprepared as they had hoped. Just as Earth's operatives were completing their mission, alarms blared and the halls flooded with Imperial soldiers. A fierce battle broke out within the dark corridors of Obsidian. The humans and their allies fought with everything they had, their cloaked suits giving them an advantage in stealth, but limited in direct combat. They darted through shadows, using the Siloran technology to evade detection while striking at key Imperial officers. The fighting was intense, brutal, a desperate struggle within the heart of the Empire's nightmare factory. Against all odds, the team succeeded in sabotaging the main control room and rigging the base's core reactors to detonate. In secret, alliances began to form, Earth's leaders reached out to sympathetic factions within the Empire's ranks, scientists, scholars, and even a few rebellious soldiers who had grown weary of the Council's iron-fisted rule. Together, they devised a plan not just to protect Earth, but to challenge the Empire's dominance itself. Quietly, humanity provided these allies with insights, tactics, and covert technology based on their own hybrid advancements. Slowly across the galaxy, a network of resistance took shape a coalition that moved in the shadows, carrying Earth's defiant spark from one world to another. It was a delicate dance, one that demanded secrecy, patience and trust. Back on Earth, life resumed, but everything was different. Citizens felt the weight of their planet's unexpected role in galactic affairs. People looked up at the stars with a mix of wonder and worry, knowing they were no longer mere observers. Stories of the Empire's cruelty circulated widely, filling humanity with both anger and determination. Every day, news of skirmishes from far-off planets, stories of resistance cells rising up in the Empire's shadow, reached Earth. The coalition was growing bolder, hitting small Imperial outposts, freeing enslaved planets. Slowly but surely, cracks began to show in the Empire's stronghold. The retreat was chaotic, with the team barely managing to escape Obsidian's atmosphere as explosions tore through the facility, ripping apart years of Imperial research in a violent blaze. Back on Earth, the news of the mission's success brought a brief moment of relief, but everyone knew it was only the beginning. The destruction of Obsidian was a bold move, 
but it would not stop the empire entirely. It would only make them more determined to crush the coalition, to reassert their control over a galaxy that was slipping from their grasp. The Empire's council, humiliated and furious, ordered the deployment of their remaining forces, their most elite soldiers, and weaponized fleets to converge upon Earth and its allied planets. As the Empire's fleets mobilized, Earth's coalition prepared for a battle unlike any they had faced before. The stakes were higher than ever. Every soldier, every scientist, every citizen knew what was at risk. The galaxy was watching, and Earth's coalition was determined to show that their spirit could not be broken, that no amount of Imperial force could crush their unity. Even as Imperial dreadnoughts darkened the skies and alien armies gathered at the edge of Earth's system, humanity stood ready, their allies by their side. Together they braced for the oncoming storm, knowing that the fight for freedom, for the galaxy itself, had only just begun. The Empire, for its part, had not forgotten the humiliation inflicted by Earth. Its council seething called upon their top strategists and scientists, intent on devising a strategy to crush this uprising once and for all. In an effort to learn more about humanity's secret to success, they dispatched covert operatives to Earth. Disguised as traders and diplomats, they mingled among Earth's people, observing, listening, reporting back to the Empire. But humanity's resilience was no longer an enigma to be decoded. The spies realized that Earth's strength came not from technology alone, but from something far more difficult to replicate an unyielding spirit, a profound connection to each other and to their home. One day, a transmission from the far reaches of the galaxy caught Earth's attention. It was a distress call from a small outpost on the edges of the Empire's territory, a planet called Tarven, known for its breathtaking, forest-covered landscape and once thriving culture. Tarven had joined the rebellion but was under siege, and their defences were crumbling against the Empire's might. The coalition turned to Earth, desperate. If Earth could rally a force and liberate Tarven, it would be a monumental victory, a blow to the Empire's morale and a beacon of hope for others. The final confrontation loomed, each side poised to unleash everything they had. The Empire's last-ditch effort to reclaim its power would meet the resilience of Earth and its allies. It was a moment the galaxy would remember, a showdown that would define the future. And as Earth's forces prepared, as the Coalition tightened their ranks, they knew this was more than just a battle for survival, it was a stand against tyranny, a testament to the strength found in unity, in the refusal to bow to oppression. As the Empire's fleet loomed over Earth, humanity and its allies took their places, from the skies above to hidden bunkers below, Every species, every soldier, held their breath, bracing for the clash that would decide their fate. The Empire launched its first wave, dreadnoughts casting dark shadows over Earth, their weapons primed to obliterate. But Earth's forces didn't hesitate. With a precision born from countless battles, they struck back. Cloaked ships flanked Imperial vessels, disrupting their formation, while ground forces activated shield systems created with Xyloran technology deflecting blasts that could have leveled cities. In the midst of the battle, humanity revealed its final move a prototype weapon developed with their alien allies a gravitational pulse emitter that could collapse space around any object. They activated it just as the Empire's flagship advanced, pulling the Imperial fleet into a vortex of energy that tore their formations apart. The Empire's forces, for the first time, fell into disarray. One by one, their ships lost power, floating helplessly in Earth's orbit. Watching their conquerors fall, the galaxy saw Earth and its allies triumph standing as symbols of resilience and freedom, and as silence settled over the battlefield, a new era dawned one where Earth, and all free worlds, forged a future unbound by fear.